Good evening, everyone. Hope you're having a wonderful day. We welcome Fafi Redline to talk about their REPEG plan update and hopefully take some questions as well. Fafi is my co-host. Uh, I've lost my co-host, Lunatic. He can't make it today, so Fafi will be a speaker slash a co-host as well. How are you doing today, Fafi? I'm good. I'm good. Thank you. How about you? Yeah, not bad. I got involved with some Twitter drama <laughs> with Lunk. Um, so yeah, we'll see how today goes. Yeah, no, I mean, it's uh, drama is somehow the, the go-to world for everything. It's, you know, just uh, discussing uh, passionately, I would say. Yeah, and I think we we were messaging Frag. It would be good to whether myself host it or someone else host it, or you just guys you guys do it in private and um, give us an update. It'd be really good um, if you guys can speak um, on a spaces or privately to clarify or clear some of the air, maybe. Yes, I, I mean to be honest, it's more like uh, if people have questions and things like that, right? I mean. Uh, I think uh, more to discuss some of the things that, uh, you know, that have been put forward as far as I'm uh, concerned is fine by me. So it's more like if people really want to see it or are interested, it's always good to have spaces and, and discuss and talk these things. Cool. Um, Redline, how are you doing, mate? Sorry, how's it going? Can you hear me? Yes, we can. How are you? Thanks for having me. Cool. And Faluna, are you speaking as well today? Um, yeah, just a little bit. You are oh, right. You're English. I didn't. I thought you were American. <laughs> yeah, yeah, English. Cool. Um, I think we introduced ourselves last time. I've not had a chance to uplo upload the podcast or spaces to YouTube. I'll do that because people wanted to listen to it uh, later. But we've introduced ourselves before, so maybe Redline can give us an update on what the uh, initial proposal was, and then what uh, what is the updated uh, proposal? Some of the changes you guys have made. Um, yeah, so if you want, I can talk about my original pro proposal. I think Faluna is going to give the exchange updates if that works for you. Um, so my proposal, basically, in basic terms, it, it it's a divergence fee which would tax the difference between the peg price that we set and, and the market price. And so that that tax, it wouldn't be burnt off. It would be so it, the tax would only be seller side, right? Never buyer side. And so what you'd be doing then is you'd be accumulating, say, the opposing trading pair to USTC all the time. So you'd be accumulating, say, if you were trading USTC against B BUSD or USTC or BTC, you'd always be um, accumulating that opposing pair. So the more valuable asset at the time of DPEG, basically. Um, and so we'd be using that asset then to buy back USTC and have try to defend the peg. Um, so, so basically we'd be taxing, but using that tax effectively, not burning it off. We'd be using it to build collateral and actually defend the peg. And then, so as we're buying back this USDC, we're starting to accumulate a lot of USDC. And so what I was trying to do then is, so we, we try cut down the long supply by when the price of USDC went above the set peg that we had. We would allow people to swap their lunk for USTC against the protocol owned USTC for a profit. So say for instance, the the price of USTC was at one dollar and the price went to a dollar ten, you'd be able to swap your lunk against the protocol for USTC and you'd net that ten cent profit basically. Um so it's kind of bringing back some of the arbitrage that we had before. And then, so another portion of it then will be used to to take um, USTC just out of supply. So we, we'd be building a USTC savings vault, basically, or staking vault. So basically, by locking up your USTC, you'll be earning rewards just purely for locking it up. So it, there's kind of a couple of different elements going on here with my proposal at the one go. But the thing is, is that it, it does require it to be implemented across the majority of markets. And we do need the exchanges on board for this to work, um, especially when there's so, such a volume of, of our tokens sitting on, on exchanges. Um, so, like, if you look at what we had before, like our capital, we have capital control measures on chain. But a lot of them are quite ineffective because so much of our tokens are off chain. So this is actually trying to bring about a decentralized capital control measure for USDC. So to be applied across all markets, basically. 
And that's kind of in brief my proposal. I had one question. It did does it need initial collateral? I know you said you'll build collateral. So when you start it, do you need some collateral then? Do you need some to fund it? If we had collateral, it would be great. But if we don't, we don't necessarily need it to fund it. So as the price depegs, you're going to start building collateral. So that's what I said with my proposal is that initially it's going to be a bit turbulent. You'll see a lot of ups and downs. But as we build collateral, it's going to, it's going to, you know, it'll get a lot more calm to trading. Like we'd have enough collateral there to actually defend the peg over time, basically. And like, if you look at the volumes that are there, like we should be able to actually build collateral relatively quick, going by the the volumes that are on the bigger exchanges, and that's kind of what we're by put together this team to kind of prove that bit, essentially. Yeah, and Lunx and USD still has a big uh, community, so I suppose people would uh, use the volume, and we can hopefully start building some collateral. Uh, one of the big questions was about exchanges saying no. Um, so, Faluna, did you say you had an update on that? Zent? Yeah, I think the guys are going to post this as well, just to um, make sure no misinformation spreads around about it. But basically, they've reached out to the C CEXs via TGF and Rex. All the CEXs have acknowledged receipt, but not all exchanges have responded yet. But of the bigger exchanges, um, we need to support the repeg. Two, of two out of three have responded positively. Um, so it has progressed past the initial point of contact and they've passed the proposal to the respective technical departments. So far, one of the exchanges has come back with an infrastructure issue on their end, um, specifically their matching engine algorithm. This is something that could be changed to make compatible, but requires them to affect the changes. But discussions are still ongoing and they have indicated that they have not shut the door to the proposal. Um, they go into model the USTC repeg proposal to not only prove the concept, but to leverage the potential CEX profits to get them in effect, to get them to affect the change. Sorry, <laughs> this requires qualified quantitative analysis to put together such a report. And um, in addition to this, exploring in detail and discussing with the CEXs what the issue is currently. As while it's not something they can implement, it could be something we could possibly provide a solution for, and this will require further investigation to determine whether it's something we can provide for them or not. So that's basically where they're up to, but they're going to post that out as well, because obviously there's been a lot of misinformation about CEX discussions. Um, but yeah, it's pretty positive. So would the, because uh, the community, let's say, the investors, they, how much can you actually share for them? Would you be able to share the exact emails or contacts proof for them? So people that are very questionable, they question everything. What sort of can we provide to the community to make them believe, you know, exchanges are supporting us or you guys? Well, I can answer that. I mean, how many tokens would you be involved with where the private discussions with exchanges would be broadcast to the community? I mean... It just doesn't happen. I mean, it doesn't happen in regular business. It, I don't understand why it would be happening with Lunk. I mean, if you look at, let's say, like, the likes of um, memcoins like Pepe or Mong or any of them, like you never see uh, the, the, the discussions where exchanges are saying they're going to be listed. And I, I, I don't think that I, I'll be posting that information. If I get a definitive yes or no off them, then I will post that. But while discussions are ongoing, like... Uh, the community's just going to have to, to wait and be patient. Like I can't, I can't accelerate it. I'm afraid. Yeah, and I, I understand it. I mean, I thought you were going to say that. Well, not thought. I didn't think you were going to say that. That's how businesses works. Um, but the issue is, you know, the community always sort of has to trust. I guess you know, there've been other proposals before. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. And I'm not going to compare you guys to Terraport. But there's, you know been instances where the communities had to trust um, and things went badly. Um, I think that's why the Lunk community just to play devil's advocate is just so cautious. And I, I think sometimes maybe a bit overtly um, concerning and, you know, the, the community, the way they rages, the tax, it, it affects development of anything. So, yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I, I support it. You know, I, I think the USCC repeg is probably the, one of the, only let's say the catalyst that can pump lunk you know there's uh, unless there's another something completely new come up that we d we've not even thought about lunk is 
with the community pool, Oracle rewards going down, we're not going to be in a position to compete with other uh, L1s. So we've got to, you know, make the most of it. You know, USDC Repeg is something I understand, most people understand, and the community can get behind. So I support it. Um, and I'll take what you've said. Hopefully that answers uh, the community's questions. Um, yeah, and the other thing then as well is that it's not just the report and analysis. Like, so we are going to produce a report and analysis for me to, to take to the exchanges. But on top of that, the, the tooling that we're going to build to do these simulations, it, that's going to be available to the community forever into perpetuity. And uh, I, I'll, like, I'll actually be writing training with Fafi on, on how to use those. Um, so Fafi is going to train me on how to use the tooling and, and I'm going to train the community essentially. Like I'll write a tutorial on, on how it works step by step. So the community will get use out of this, of this outside of even my proposal. Um, and the other thing as well is that timing wise, we're kind of in a good position to try and make a move on USTC, I think, especially with the the, the upcoming US legislation where they're about to vote on the on the stablecoin bill, um, which will put a moratorium basically on any other um, algorithmic stablecoins being created. And that puts us in a really good position as we have 21 stables, you know, and there's no other blockchain that can offer that or potentially offer an on-chain Forex like we can. Yeah, definitely. Uh, some of the stuff that Fafi was talking about, uh, about c the Forex stuff, would, would really come into play to build use cases as well and usage of USD. Uh, Fafi, you can maybe jump in now. Yes. Yes. So uh, basically just on that last part, and that's very important to, uh, to press that again. Uh, so that's an example. But let's remember that the value proposal of uh, Terra Luna was... Uh, decentralized economy needs decentralized money, right? And that's something that we all know we very much need in crypto, and that's a topic, a recurrent topic, etc. Now, as part of this real proposal, and I've been saying that, but sometimes people either don't want to get it, or maybe they don't see it, so I've wrote like a thread uh, regarding uh, this. We're actually rolling out some tools, like an emulator, something which allows you to try this idea. So basically, as we are going to be trying this particular idea and working with it, right? That's true. We need to get answers from the sex, etc. That's true. And even if we get positive um, uh, answers, it's still challenging. It's no easy task, right? Otherwise, everyone would have done it before. Uh, we have to keep in mind that we're going to roll out a methodology, processes, and tools for people to be able to basically try their own algos if they wish to, right? So that's kind of how we progress in terms of ecosystem and in terms of crypto, right? So we think that USDC or the proposition of value, which is uh, uh, brought by uh, the decentralized money or algo stable is something very valuable and is going to help the price of Loom to improve and increase. And But we shouldn't be the only one to do that. And on top of basically using this as an avenue to roll all these things, we also want people to be able to do that and to scale this effort. The more, the merrier, and the faster we can get where we want to get. Yes, I mean, I'll, to be honest here as well, the, the models that you're going to build that will help others try algos as well, I don't know if it will be used that much. Are there people in the community that would use it? Um, I think people are more looking forward to you guys working on something that works rather than, you know, building something that other people are going to test out to potentially um, make it work. Um, but um, I appreciate you guys' honesty saying that, you know, you're just testing now. Let's put just Wait, on, this on, on that point, uh, is basically... Um, you, you want to attract these people. So you've got lots, for example, we've got a guy in the community everyone knows of, uh, it's Ed, Professor Ed, right? He's an academic. This guy, what he does, he researches uh, things, right? So once we have the tools, we have the platform, we have the blockchain and all, right? Uh, 
these people will be able to actually, it, it will attract these people who may not be here already, if that makes sense as well. But I understand what you mean. That, that's a fair point, right? That's us uh, like pushing on this idea. Uh, but we have to think that the community is also dynamic. People who are here today might not be there tomorrow. And people who are not here today might be there tomorrow, right? So we have to think of this too. I was sort of putting on my sort of trader narrative hype uh, guy. You know, people can get behind, oh, these team are working on something to potentially repeg. Then just saying, oh, we're going to build this mod uh, model or module or whatever, where others going to come and try stuff. S same as their one team working on parity to potentially D apps to move over, which I don't think we've seen much D apps move over. So I was playing a bit of a devil's advocate. We want to see, you know, the red lines, uh, USCC repeg proposal actually put into action. And um, that's what's going to you know, help people like myself who probably don't understand a lot of the L1 stuff that's happening. And most of the community, I, I put a poll up uh, a few couple of weeks ago, and I don't think anyone even understands what parity is. Uh, most people don't uh, understand it in, in a lot of technical detail. They just want to get behind something. And US is a repeg is a, you know, 60 IQ, simple things that myself and others can get behind. So uh, I'd rather see, you know, you guys making it work, which hopefully you guys can. Alex have joined as well. Hi, Alex, how are you doing? What's up, Bronco? Cool. Sorry, for, sorry for being late. I've had a, I've had a lot of uh, very personal stuff I've had to get ready for. But um, anyway, my apologies. But I'm here now. No worries, mate. Thanks for joining, um, Fafi. Do you want to talk a little bit about the changes you've made from the initial proposal, initial spaces we've had, and after the community feedback? Yes. So uh, basically, uh, I think we've been like uh, talking a lot uh, to people and trying to hear what they wanted to say, etc. And really, like the, um, I think the main, well, the main concern or issues was initially around the sex, etc. So that's why we wanted to open a bit more the possibility, right? Because like people were saying, what if yes, what if no? Well, hey, you get it. Like it allows for us to work. Of course, we want to go to the through uh, with this proposal. Of course, that's our target. But it also means that, you know, it gives room for other things to happen, which is cool, I think. Um, the other thing is uh, we've been working on that's more like for us on the cut side. Uh, we've been like uh, deving some sort of uh, matching engine so we can get uh, a rough idea or start playing about potentially the issues that uh, Biden are um, facing. So the next step that uh, we are having with them, I don't know if it was clear earlier. By the way, Kojak is here. He can present himself just after. So uh, he's going to look or we're trying to push to get some more technical details from the from Binance to know exactly what the issue is on their end. Right. So uh, basically, so we can actually be proactive and try to find out or figure out ways for us to either change slightly the algo or make it more compatible. So to push a yes answer from them. Right, so that's really uh, the kind of thing we've been looking at, um, and then um, I think that we didn't. I mean, like to be honest, uh, most of the the thing which came back to us, people were pretty. Uh, we got lots of positive feedbacks. Uh, some we got around like the team members and all, but they got to 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 know them a bit more or to to listen a bit more to uh, to the message, and this seems to be uh, more accepted. And by the way, I think. Uh, it will be good for uh, Kojak to, to present himself as well to, to show a bit the skills because, for example, one of the issues we had wasn't really an issue, but it was people saying that uh, he doesn't exist or he's the same person, etc. Right? So it was important to actually bring him on stage and to be able to show people that, no, he's actually here. He's a physical person, right? So, but, yeah. And then uh, in terms of payment and uh, formula, uh, I don't know if we discussed this the other day, but it's basically uh, twice. I mean, it's two four weeks proposals. So this one we're voting for now is four weeks, right? It ends in four weeks, and then only if we're happy to pursue or to carry on, um, we can we can uh, put another proposal for the remaining four weeks. The last thing I wanted to say uh, about that is that I've, hear, I've heard some people again saying that, oh, it's going to be like uh, basically a 12-month proposal every month. No, it's two months. It's like precisely for this scope of work, 
and you know you, you may come to us or we may have like other projects or things which are not related right i mean it can still be ustc but something else but this particular project this thing is two months and at this point we don't intend to roll that like on a monthly basis systematically cool so after this month what can the what's the what are like the key deliverables so where would you where what can Lunk commute expect to get after this month where do you what would be a key success factor from from you guys after a month right yes so uh basically there are two main things we're going to be looking at is a we're going to be looking at uh doing some swap and running basically some trades uh against uh ustc and we're going to pick some historical data we're going to generate some data on our end so it's going to be like we're going to be working on uh the data uh, loading slash uh, data component of the tools, right? Because currently we only support Binance and we would like to get some data from the blockchain to be able to, to load trades, for example, during the crash. So we're going to get this data and then we'll start uh, running some um, uh, simulations and see basically how much money we're generating from the diversion stacks, right? So we should be able to start getting some results showing how much like you know is it viable like some pre or some rough estimates right some report which might not be ultra accurate but giving us at least some sort of ideas of like how much money we generate how much trading volume we need to generate that kind of money and um basically if it makes sense or not we might also have some uh, better visibility of the issues that we have been facing with, uh, well, with the, the main sex that we've been talking about. That's another thing, right? Depending of how he moves with them or if we see things obvious on our end, right? And the other thing is, uh, which is somehow related, is how much they're going to be making out of it, right? So again, simulation. So to make it very simple, you'll get some initial data but showing you uh, which might not be the most accurate or cover all the scenarios. That makes sense. So at the, I know Redline has already said for this to work, the exchanges need to support it. So at the end of the month, will, will you be in a position to go to some of the exchanges and say, this is the testing that we've done. Um, do you think we can start working on, on this proposal? All right. So, uh, well, I'm hoping we can uh, start doing that even like a, a bit before like the end of the month, right? So I'm hoping that we can start running some like say within like two weeks. I'm hoping because so that's kind of like a, a goal, but we should be able to start getting some sort of results. Then depending on how good or bad they are, we might need to work them a bit more or look at different scenarios, right? <clears throat> but normally, like we're hoping that within like one month seems like reasonable to be able to start at least consider it. Then again, <coughs> that would uh, sorry that would allow us to engage with them so then basically there are two phases phase one you go to the sex you say hey this is my data look at them this is my report they're full they're complete look at them take a, a decision yes or no that's one thing but what you can also do even if your data and your reports are not comp uh, fully completed right you can still uh, start showing them what you're having and where this is going if that makes sense Tell me. <laughs> uh, can, yeah. Sorry. Yes. Can you hear me? No. I think my, okay, yeah, yeah, I think yeah. my mind right, just so, glitched a bit. Sorry. Carry on. Uh, so short. Uh, long story short. Basically, within the month is either we. I mean, obviously, we don't have put like two months if uh, we didn't need the two months, right? But uh, after one month or within a month, we're hoping to have, either start having some good data to show or enough data to engage and to push further discussion. Of course, by the end of the month, it'd probably be on the exchanges. Uh, the ball's going to be in the exchanges court to say, can we proceed or not? No, I don't uh, think so. No. But, oh, yeah, sorry, go ahead. But I, I, I say after one month, we'd have some of the initial testing done, but we wouldn't have a report and everything compiled probably to six, till six to eight weeks. That's kind of the timeline we projected for this. So you would be able to see the initial results to show that the concept is either working or not working, but... For a complete results, we'd expect it to be about two months. 
and, and to compile a report to take to the exchanges. So, so we'd have we'd be putting together an institutional grade report to give the exchanges, if that makes sense, and that would take approximately two months. All right. But after okay. one month, you'd be able to see the what the initial results are, basically. Cool. And then, and then the, my, my final question, and then guys, if you have any questions, just raise your hand and you can ask questions to the guys. Is So you guys believe this will work, right? Obviously you're back testing to prove that it works, but you guys believe that it will work. So the reason why I'm asking is lots of people are saying, oh, they're just doing this to get some money out of it. And I, I don't agree with it. I'm just playing the devil's advocate and asking the questions, but you guys genuinely believe that it will work and you're doing all this data testing. Again, things might go wrong to to validate your idea that it will work and then present to the exchanges. Um, yeah, exactly. And that's kind of why I put the team together because like I did put together a very rough proof of concept in my proposal, but I don't have the skills or experience that these guys have. So like, that's why I put this team together. They have the skills and experience to put together a proper report to take to Binance. Do you know, I, it's one thing showing something on paper that in theory might work, but actually having a full quantitative analysis of it, that's a different thing to take them. Do you know what I mean? They have to take that more seriously. No, no, it makes sense. Uh Yes. Also, if I may add, is like uh, with respect to the exchanges, people be like, uh, they said no, they said yes, they said no. We're actually, uh, and to answer your question, we're hoping to push, right? We're hoping to actually be able to provide enough things or to show some work or to provide some data that we can actually, they might say like, uh, they might say, well, why shall I do that? Look, you're making money here, please, uh, you know. You have to be a bit pushy, right? You can't just come and take a no as an answer. So uh, basically, we believe in it. And even more so, we are hoping that we can even convince the people on the other side of us, right? Yeah, I think that's where Twitter yeah. goes on. You know, people tweeting and saying, like, you know, Binance supported Lunk not because they wanted to. There's hundreds of projects that want their support is because of they saw how big the community was and it helped Binance. So if they can see how big the community is and they can make money as well, the the, the volume on the exchanges go up. More people use it. I'm sure they'll they'll support it. But it's not. But it's not only that you see because a big part of my proposal is that we be doing a profit share with them of the divergence fee so like we'd be taking them many multiples of what they'd normally take in trading fees so like we'd be offering them much much more money than they make off of anybody else like even if you look at bitcoin they have zero fees there they make no money off it whereas we'd be probably one of the most profitable chains to them that that's the whole point of this to actually prove that concept to them that they'd make a lot of money by doing this and at the same time it brings about true decentralized money with true decentralized capital controls. Yeah, I guess what we could do is, I know Binance is like the big uh, big dog here, so it might be difficult with them. Maybe we could just approach some smaller exchanges. I'm sure you guys have already thought about it. Just smaller exchanges that would want the hype from Lunk community, want influence, I'm a small influencer, but there's lots of bigger influencers that can tweet to them and say, look, you know, this is what we've got. And if they try it, it works. And then maybe the bigger exchanges would want to play ball. So um, that's something maybe we could look at as well. Uh, yeah, that's something we have explored. Like, we're, like t both TGF and Rex are still in discussions with both big and small exchanges. Just I'm kind of have been focusing on the three big ones we need, because if you look at the trading volume of USDC, like something like 95% of it is, is held on three exchanges. Um, so, yeah, we can do that. But for this to work, we need to kind of get those big exchanges to work with us on this. Um, and I think that producing this report, like the amount of profit they'll make, we should be definitely able to leverage that to get them to affect the changes we need. Could it be just trialed on one exchange? Maybe it's a dumb question to ask. So let's say there's a small exchange that no one uses, uh, but they'll be happy to try it because of the free marketing that they'll get. Uh, would they be able to trial it on a small exchange? Um, I suppose the fact that they would have such low volume anyway, they could. The thing is, is that people are incentivized to pull their tokens away from where there's a capital control measure. So they, they might, maybe they would they'd be open to testing it. I don't know. And for the publicity of it, but you must bear in mind that if the price was to be paid, then the people on that exchange only would be paying the divergence fee. And so if, 
what would happen is they'd effectively move to another exchange. So it'd be hard to even model that whether it's actually working or not, because you're leaving black markets open. With my proposal, they'd, like there would be a, a blacklisting of the exchanges that didn't that didn't work with us on this. That's why I'm saying we need to have the majority of them on board before we can before we move forward. Um, so, and, and when I mean blacklist now, it, I, I mean blacklist in a different way. So basically, it would prevent new funds from entering that exchange or that decentralized exchange, but would, but, but would prevent, um, uh, sorry, it would prevent new funds from entering, but would allow them to leave. So say if you had your token set on an exchange and they decided they weren't going to implement the fee, you'd still be able to withdraw your funds, um, but nobody would be able to add more funds to those markets. Yeah, it makes sense. It probably wouldn't just work to just trial it on one exchange. Um, no, thanks for answering that. Um, anything for you guys to add? Maybe I can start bringing Alex on and ask him a few questions. Uh, that's fine. A, a just, general uh, question. At some point, you, you will have to, uh, to to bring Kojak for him to introduce himself, if you don't mind. Yeah, and yeah, we'll bring him on after Alex. I'll, I'll ask you a general question, Alex. I know you've been here from the start. I mean, we've done lots of spaces together. Your uh, proposal of your algorithmic stablecoin, the burn drama. What's your general thoughts on Luna Classic at the moment of this year-long journey that we've been on? <laughs> Uh, um, uh, well, it's been a long journey, right? I think, um, I think the, the most important thing for, um, that, that I think it, the community, um, that, that, that something that just applies to all crypto is, um, the worst, uh, well, the worst thing you can do is have like, is have like grifts, grifts, and people like stealing money from the community, like without any technical progress being done. Kind of like you know, in the fourth quarter of last year, let's say. Um, the second worst thing you can do is just sit around and argue without doing something, um, because crypto moves very quickly. There are always new protocols coming out, uh, you know, competing for attention and coming up with new technologies and new consensus mechanisms and new improvements, right? So if you're if you're a crypto community that is using legacy technology, it's it's just it's important to just move fast and and break small things. I guess it, um, is a way to put it, like. Um, a lot of people have been there's it's of course good to to be skeptical and to and to be rigorous when you're looking at proposals from people and um but it's also like if the proposal is fundamentally going in the in a direction that the community wants but it's not perfect um it's a lot better to just go with the imperfect thing than to kind of kind of um fight each other over lots of little technicalities right like if you look at like anyone who's followed like like stablecoin stuff i've written knows that knows that you know there are imperfections for me in this proposal right um there are imperfections for every for anybody um you know the community kind of um f fought a lot over that multi-sig wallet from from like eight, eight, you know, seven or eight months ago. I don't even remember how long it was. And that was like $4 million that just went to waste because the community just like spent so much time arguing about it, that circumstances changed. And, and then the money kind of couldn't be, it became a lot more problematic to, to obtain that money. And, and, um, you know, certain, I guess some really core people, like key people were alienated by things that like, community leaders are saying and things like that so so I, I guess the, what i'm trying to say is like don't let the perfect be the enemy of the good and and if 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 a proposal goes in the general direction that you think is good then it's better to to kind of endorse that and hope to improve on things later than kind of you know everybody clawing each other's eyes out trying to trying to find the the absolutely perfect proposal I feel like that has been a really, really recurring theme 
in the community over the past year, right? Or certainly nine months. Um, and it's, it's been to everybody's detriment. Yeah, I guess it's almost uh, like a light, a good point for just just in general in life, isn't it? Because we see people just rather than help everyone with the four million that was free money, because maybe some people would have made a bit of money out of it. They just wanted to waste it, which is crazy, really. I know we talked about it back then as well. So yeah, with this as well, I know there's lots of people saying no to it. They they want to just completely discredit Red Line's proposal because can't remember his name there's one person in the team that the community doesn't like i don't think i follow him maybe you guys know the name so yeah it'd be i don't think it's the right thing to completely discredit a, 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 a prop just for one person working on it or what some person that they don't like it was amazing to actually see the difference when i announced the team members of you know the amount of support i had for the proposal up until the point at which i announced the team like then it just changed but like i mean so people are arguing in reality against people that are on the team rather than against the merits of the proposal itself like i mean it was night and day when i announced the the team members the reaction i had and i think like the team is actually quite diverse i i think every Fact, like Lunk is very factionalized and I think every faction has somebody on this team that represents them here. Sure, there might be somebody that you don't like, but equally you have someone that you do like on the team. And, you know, we have to be as a community willing to compromise going forward. I mean, like even amongst us on the team, like we've had our disputes before and we, we've agreed to put, you know, we've shook hands and we're willing to work together moving forward. And I think it'd be good if the community could do that as well, you know. No, that's well said. And Chris, sorry, Alex, you were going to say something. Chris, yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Oh, uh, Faffy, I, I wasn't going to say anything. So, um, so you, whoever wants to speak next, go ahead. I no, just wanted to say very briefly that uh, Bilbo, actually, that's the person we were talking about just before, is. Uh, a great person honestly like he's got uh, i mean he's on twitter you can go and ask him question or talk to him or chit chat via, via message he really is a nice very skilled person he's not like a monster or a mean person or someone etc and sometimes uh it is because we don't talk these small misunderstandings right he's someone who cares for the chain he's got a validator etc but he's really like a very skilled and a very nice person really like fun and all he's really cool that's all I wanted to say. That. Cool. Uh, we'll, we'll move on to some L1 questions because that's one of, been one of the biggest causes of drama. And I'll reach out to Frag as well because I know, Fafi, we joke on Twitter. We joke about Morocco and second and third wives. So, you know, I speak to you more than maybe some of the other team members, but I've got nothing against the L1 team. I'll reach out to them if they want to make their own spaces or um, someone else want to arrange of spaces with Fafi, Alex and Redline, that's completely fine. Uh, but yeah, what's your thoughts on the L1? I, I know it's not, I know we, we clarified it last time, this is not going against the L1, it's not quant team versus the L1, um, it's something that could be worked together, but yeah, could you just share your thoughts on that? Maybe Fafi first and then we can move on to other people as well. Alright, so um, it's uh I don't, uh, what I was saying, for example, today, um, in terms like today, we, we talked about uh, with, uh, I spoke with Frag, right? And people misunderstood, misunderstand. I want like, I have, a, I can see. So I, I have a background as a developer and all, and I can see some items. And that's part of the game is a decentralized uh, blockchain. And everyone who can, some people cannot, and that's fair enough, right? Or may not have an opinion or may like it. I, I kind of see the items that they put in a proposal, etc. And I, I have kind of, I'm thinking forward in three months, how are we going to use this to generate revenues or things like that, right? So, uh, you have to take it in this context. I have nothing personal and frankly, I wouldn't care uh, in terms of like, you know, that's, it's not about like, I don't like you, you have to go away. It's more about even like questioning, like I don't like this item or I think you should take this item out 
Of course, if they would listen or not. Uh, and of course, they can't listen to everyone as well, right? But you have to take it in this context, like in kind of a professional. And if you have been like working around in banks or trading floors or things like that, we have very, ag- well, you, you may say aggressive. People tell me like you're not professional. Go in a trading floor in a bank in London. Look at how people like, you know, uh, uh, talk or address each other. And then you will see that basically what we're seeing here ain't so much, ain't that much, right? So basically what I'm going to say is that they have delivered priority, they have done the job, they're skilled people, like, you know, uh, I know more like uh, Frag, I know less Vin. Uh, however, sometimes it feels, and that's my opinion, I'm going to say it like it, the nice way, is sometimes maybe like we need to, to either get some more feedback or try to think more, but that's not for them in particular, for all of us, where we want to go and what is it we want to do. Right. For example, like USTC, stablecoin, all these things are a hot topic. What's the over hot topic? You share the picture earlier showing like, oh, look, we're running out of money. How are we going to do? You better discuss this today or you better wait in one or two years. You can't do that. Right. So and, and discussing these things don't mean I hate you or you hate me. It doesn't mean you have to go either. Right. It's not like that. However, these are things we need to discuss and we need to find a way to discuss them in a healthy way. So ideally in the space, for example, I, I suggested with you because I like how it is natural and how, uh, well, you're known for that anyway. And also you need someone to animate, to ask the right question, to do the thing, etc. But that's, that's not just a, you know, a hobby. You need to know how to do these things, right? So uh, basically, they've done the parity. That's cool. We have upgraded. That's awesome. Uh, one thing I would say, for example, is, uh, you know, we should have started or we needed to make the effort to start looking for the apps while the parity was happening, right? You can't just put the parity on the table and boom, no. So six months ago, you start actually going to see the apps and builders or you think about it so that in six months, once you put the uh, parity on the table, the apps are ready to roll as well, right? Another thing that we saw now, and again, uh, uh, people may say, uh, not talking or saying go away, that's not that, that's more trying to have a reflection as a group. So uh, the other thing is, for example, Terra Station is not working, okay? Uh, you need to put a PR, you need to put the code and get it reviewed by TFL. Do that one month ago, right? You do that one month ago. This way, by the time that you actually upgrade, TFL gets the time to actually look at it. And then once you upgrade, uh, like, you know, TFL, because they're busy, it's a company, they're doing their own thing. So by the time you upgrade, they have actually uh, reviewed everything. And then Terra, uh, Terra Station is ready to roll, you know, makes it more smoothly. So that's fine. We're learning, you know, that's cool. I'm not saying like you made a mistake, you must uh, disappear or go away. That's not what I'm saying. But it's very important to be able to save these things so that we don't do them again in the future, right? So that's what I'm going to say. The other thing is that we need, but then we're limited in terms of resources. There is another uh, 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 prop which is coming up uh, from another team and they have some interesting items on them. It's not personal. It's not, I like this team and I don't like the other. Personally, I, I think it would be a mistake, for example, to uh, to lose someone like Frag or Vin. It would be stupid. You have resources. You need more than, than that, right? You don't just need two developers to run a $500 million blockchain. It's, it's too limited, right? So we have plenty of work to do and we need to find a way to make uh, these things work together because we need more than just like, for example, enabling the, or, or doing stuff with the market module. We need, on the other list, you've got like uh, two ideas. For example, I'm going to tell them. One of them is to split the community pool between uh, the L1 work and the L2 work, etc. That's a brilliant idea. That's thinking forward because uh, it means that we're not always taking all the money away and like the app can also uh, uh, get their funding and, and actually uh, get developed and, and get delivered. That's super important. That's one thing. The other thing is uh, the Alliance module, I think is actually very, very, very important topic and item. Let me tell you why. I don't even know if, uh, Ed, I haven't discussed this, but that's just my, uh, my point is, for example, if you take block entropy, it could be like a, a, a great use case for us. If, say, that uh, we could actually uh, get 
uh, some sort of link uh, pouring this blockchain, etc. That could be awesome. And then if you can have like the alliance module, which allows to make alliances with chains so that they benefit each other, that would be amazing, right? Because you've got like a use case, which is super hot topic, which is basically image generation, etc. And I think some people have used it recently, which is great, right? And so if we don't roll out in advance this infrastructure to gain this potential use cases and all, then like, you know, if we think about it in three months, in three months, it's too late. We need to think ahead of time. So sorry, I've been super long, but it's important. Um, I have like no personal hate or agenda or anything about anyone. I'm just trying to say, hey, we need to self-reflect or, or review the work we have done and our potential mistakes and good things. And B, we need to not question in a, like a very negative way or all, but try to be pragmatic and see what is going to generate some revenue and set our priorities accordingly. That's all uh, I have uh, there's topic. two questions for you, Fafi, from Rick, uh, Classic Dow. Uh, one is the what's the whole budget uh, for this research? So is it just two months, or is it going to be another prop that come up in, for another month? Uh, what's the budget for the whole no, uh, research? That, that's I've said. Like you know, that, that's actually that, that's for him because he, this person tweeted that we are going to basically, if you vote today for this proposal, which is $20,000, it means that you're going to get like, you're going to be stuck for like, uh, you know, 240K for the year. Absolutely not. Right? Right now, we have a particular item in mind. We're trying to roll this out. It's going to be good to show to the community what it is, because most of the community, as you said before, they don't necessarily understand why you need to do that and how it works, etc. You don't just drop a stable algo. You need to do these things. Otherwise, you can't actually roll them out. TFL used to do that. T TFL used to, to use uh, similar tools internally, and they used to have like a Python library and also It's like we focus on a uh, red line uh, idea and we also use this opportunity to roll this out right and then maybe in two months the community tells you like you know what go away or maybe uh like you know block entropy comes and that's the, the super hot topic which is going to generate 500 mil per, per year and like you know that's it all focus goes to it or something else right so at this point and i mean it it's not about establishing ourselves as like the go-to team forever, but most importantly, setting like processes and standard procedures so that we have these things available and that they can like, you know, be used or be run uh, uh, in the future, right? So it's a uh, 40K, 40K, that's really what it is. There is no plan uh, to spend more at this point. Cool. Thanks for that, Fafi. Um, Kayak, uh, you've requested to speak for a while. Do you want to go ahead? Yeah, thanks. Uh, basically, let me introduce myself a bit because I'm rather unknown to the community. Uh, I'm a developer. I'm a Lunk believer. And I've been working for a trading company for the past several years. Sadly, they don't do crypto. They're stuck with Forex and uh, stocks. Uh, so I deal with crypto in my, in my personal time, mainly creating bots uh, in Python and UI in React. And uh, there was some backlash on Twitter, people asking how did I end up in this crew and who am I? Uh, so basically, I had some free time and uh, I, I tried to help the community or the chain somehow and uh, i waited like for months asking people nothing happened and then i met someone on discord and uh, we hooked up and here i am yeah like just to back up what kajak saying like i know he got in touch with me even months ago and um, before my proposal was even this far along and like I referred him to both Bilbo and LBA to maybe get involved with them. Um, so like he has been trying to get involved and help uh, for the last few months, definitely. I can see that you, you can check for yourselves in the Discord servers, you'll see he's been asking to help. Yeah, I, I wrote to LBA basically on the channel, so I tried to reach out to anybody. Um, 
I don't do factions. Uh, I mean, we are in him in this because we like Lunk and we wanted to succeed. And uh, I offered my help for free, uh, so I don't mind. Yeah. So I'm not new. I'm just. Uh, so what specific unknown. work are you going to be doing uh, with the team? Uh, I will help out. Uh, I'm not full time. I will help out with coding in Python, gathering the data, probably downloading the market info. Uh, and uh, I don't know if that happens. Uh, I offer to brainstorm on how the sexes uh, can solve the issue uh, with the implementation, but. For that, I think we need an NDA and, and stuff. But if, if the task end up, end up on me, I, I, I'm really happy to solve this problem uh, or help to solve it. But. Cool. Thanks for that. Uh, we could move on to the next speaker. Reglius, have you got a question for us? Hi, everyone. Uh, can I be free, actually, to express uh, my opinion? Yeah, go ahead. We like honesty. So, basically, what we are seeing now is a rush to... Uh, it's holiday voting for everyone. And they want, actually, to express... Because what I'm seeing now, like, is a childish game between different devs in the community and stakeholders uh, so i'm gonna tell you what i've learned uh, into building a dap for link until now uh, we need this thing we definitely need something to test algo on it but we don't need upgrades uh, think about it guys if we keep upgrading every three months we're gonna end up Again, as a dead blockchain, without any DAP, no smart contract updates, we're going to lose probably all the value that we we still have locked uh, everywhere. Some in Astroport, uh, TFG and TFL, so we can lose everything. Um, so think about it. Uh, uh, Personally, in my opinion, I support this this uh, this proposal because we definitely gonna need testing UST in real uh, environment uh, algo guided. So basically, it was the doc one idea. Maybe Fafi can with his. Uh, platform provide a better algorithm, a better understanding of this uh, stablecoin algo. So we can maybe do better with that. But definitely, guys, we, we don't need upgrades. And to add something else that everyone probably is missing, if you don't pay for Terra Rebels infrastructure and they leave us, we're going to end up without a functional wallet. So we're going to be like a beggar for all the platforms to list us. Thank you. So is, is, so is your point about the L1 team's Q3 uh, proposal? Uh, we don't need any L1 team for now, in my belief. Because uh, Rigli Sosa, she's personally working on fixing SDKs. They will be available probably after a month, so other devs can build like Kaijak, he is Python, so it will be easy for him to integrate. We maybe until the long, until the end of the year we're gonna integrate a new uh, programming language for for Lunk, so it's gonna be new SDKs. Maybe they will they will actually attract those 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 guys. So if I if I yeah. if I can just jump in, um, I, I think we've got to have an L one dedicated team, right? I, like, there's a lot of stuff that they do that, um, uh, like, 
just because we don't follow every single thing that they're doing every day, um, that doesn't mean they're not doing anything, I guess. Um, I just want to kind of register my, I guess, my thoughts on that because, like, like we're, we're not... Um, our view is that the L1 team needs some kind of um, supplement or some kind of, like, uh, um, you know, could use some, you know, outside involvement in in the whole, in addressing the whole stablecoin issue. But, uh, but we are not, we're not trying to, like, crowd them out. We do think that they are performing a needed function. And, um, uh, yeah, I... I I appreciate your 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 opinion there, but I think I've got a. I just felt obligated to register my disagreement there, like that there that that we don't you know that we don't need more or they're, or they're not doing anything. What about actually posing the L one for for this quarter, and we get back to the the next quarter? Actually, the idea is that no one will invest in a, uh, actually in a blockchain without a community pool. We're gonna end up with an empty community pool if we finish like that. And I believe no one will invest in something like that. If I may actually, if I may, okay. that's uh, actually, so on this topic, uh, I agree with Alex and also discontinuing. So saying we're going to cut the L1 team for a quarter. Y you can't like people need some sort of visibility as well. So you can't cut them and then restart them because maybe they're going to commit to some other things and then we're going to lose them. So as much as I see what you mean, you can't cut them and then bring them back, etc. Now you, br you brought an important point, right? So the community pool is running out then. And that's what basically I mean when I talk to Frag, etc. Find items, you can do some defined items that are going to allow us to fill the community pool more. These are L1 items, right? So, for example, instead of fiddling, in my opinion, with the market module, right? Why not investigate, uh, you know, slashing a bit of the reward or like seeing if we can't like cut, like basically trying to find ways, sit down and say, where can we get some sort of revenue? Where can we squeeze some sort of revenue uh, with like a quick three month development, right? Or maybe shorter. And then if they can do that, you know, that's an L1 item. So they get some work. They can be funded for that. And then on top of that, this is going to help to actually fund some more work. So when I say personally, um, when I talk, it's not like we should cut the L1 team or I don't like them, etc. But we need to, and as much as the funding is an issue, but you need to actually, it's going to be an issue anyway. So we need to think of items which are like uh, like basically we don't want to have just cost centers otherwise we're going to run out of cash flows that's what i'm saying and um, if i could just add to that as well i'd agree with both alex and faffy um but i do think it also brings up a point that we do need to innovate as well as just maintain the blockchain um you know because if we start to innovate and create new ideas and bring more people bring more community in and people start to buy into us again, like the value of our community pool will go, go up. Like people just look at the amount of tokens in our community pool without actually looking, like we're at one of our lowest price points we've ever been at, you know, but if we start to innovate and start to actually make moves and do things, like our price point is going to go up and the value inside that community pool is going to go up with it. And um, so we will have money to pay all these developers and maybe invest that money when it's there to kind of keep the ball rolling, if that makes sense, do you know? So, yeah, it's important we innovate as well. We, I, I agree with that. We need to innovate. But let's imagine that Ethereum from the beginning kept actually upgrading their uh, software every two months. What, what would happen to them? So basically, we, like... I say that like people wouldn't be able to keep up with the documentation that there'd be too much too much change basically is it or or what are you trying to say i don't know if you are aware about it guys but we don't have any point like uh 
like uh, I don't know a point to go, like a website to go on it to read about Link to build on Link. Uh, you have to read the code on three GitHub's. You have to go into five Discords. You have to go into maybe 20 or more Medium articles and you try actually to fill in the gaps. Uh, and I see there's, there is some community members have created a website very recently, I think, and they're trying to create sort of a central website or pub like that, like you're saying. So maybe just give it time and that will come, but maybe it is a good idea that we maybe look at having a community-owned website that's not owned privately by another individual and maybe having somebody run that. But the important thing to bear in mind as well is that we don't have a lot of funds at the same time, but yeah, a website is something we should definitely have. Okay, I'll, I'll ask a question here. I think I've tweeted about this before. So I support the L1 team. I support what we need to do to get Lunk to succeed and get behind a hype and narrative. But if we didn't pay, if we didn't have a Q3 proposal for Q1 from the L1 team, what would happen? Rather than, you know, spending money every three months, if we, if we didn't do this work, what would happen? What are the risks or bad things that can happen? So imagine tomorrow you have a bug or you have an issue. Uh, imagine, okay, imagine like it has happened in the past if someone like find a security issue, right? That's quite uh, sensitive, right? And they're going to they're gonna be here to be able to integrate and, and work with, even though we have some very capable validators. But, you know, that's the kind of thing they're going to be looking at, at the very least, right? To have at least, and, and, and that's why, you may want to think maybe like do you do you want to have like you know a whole organization of 20 uh with like uh this and that and uh and the nature or do you want to have like a lean organization but you know uh Fafi, what when you say bug what do you mean about that a bug basically like uh, tomorrow you wake up there is a security uh there is a like in in one of our dependencies there is like a how do you say uh, how do you say the word there is a um how do you say, there is a security um, i forgot anyway so there is something there is a, a security issue right have been found into one of our dependencies and it needs to be upgraded or there is like some sort of bug that they have uh, written some code that doesn't work as expected but we only see it when we we have never used this part of the code for example we haven't seen up to now well like critical was the word before so these things happen all the time you can't just have a program and let it go so but that's a, a support or maintenance function usually you're going to have like your dev team you're going to have like developing your active feature and you also need to have your support and maintenance now do we want to change every two weeks or one month everything and we start from scratch of course we don't want to do that right we need some sort of stability but you will always have or need some sort of small improvements or some uh, maintenance, I guess. I, I mean, I will find it a bit maybe dangerous to to run with zero uh, L1 team, I think. Okay, now the reason why I was asking that question, because Ed said it, that we had enough funds in the community pool to have an L1 team uh, for two years, I think, two and a half years. So that's the reason why I was asking, because the from a trader investor from someone looking from the outside for new investors to bring in they can get behind a hype like USTC Repeg if you guys do a good job with the back testing get exchanges involved that's going to build hype parity or uh, some of the other words that they have, I've had a quick look to their one um, proposal for Q3 that's not going to sort of build hype you know other influencers tweeting retweeting new people jumping in price goes up so that's the reason why I was asking what's the you know, is it worth paying them for to run out of community pool in, in a year or so? Or is it worth investing in something else or, or do both, you know, pay you guys? Uh, but things that the community or simple brain people can get behind and buy and hide. That's that's the reason why I was asking that question. So on that point, that's very important. So the community pool, in fact, that's one mistake we're making. And you raised a very good point. So do we need some, do we need like L1? Of course we do, right? Now, do we need to allocate everything to L1 is a mistake. 
right? You, you, you can't. I mean, uh, normally, like if you look at Luna V2, like the community pool is not for L1. The community pool is for L2, for the apps, right? So it's a grant system. You come, you ask, you say, I would like some funding because I'm going to build an app and this app is going to do this, this, this and that. And, and uh, you're happy for them to come because they're going to bring users, they're going to uh, utilize the blockchain, they're going to generate fees, blah, 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 blah. So, I think the mistake that we're making, and you said it somehow in the statement, we have enough community pool for like well, L1 for like uh, two years. I, well, I would rather like we do, for ex- we give ourselves a target right now is we need to be able to live off it with one year and then have L2 on an, uh, for one year. So instead of doing two years of L1, I would rather do like one year of L1, L2. But then that makes us or that's, that should refill it for the next year. Right, as opposed to having the L1 run out of everything just for like a, it's a cost center and it's not generating any revenue or profit. And then when you run out, you run out. There is nothing you can do about it, right? So um, it's like we need to think of, uh, and that's why like in the, the prop that I, I said from uh, Billboard was nice because it kind of uh, split, made this separation between L2, L1. That's the kind of things we need to think about, but we need to fund different things. We can't just fund uh, um, L1, um, and that's why we need to scale down. It doesn't have to be, I think, in my opinion, another thing is that we've gotten into this habit of going straight for the three month proposal, no matter what. I think that's not right. I think whenever you take, for example, you take funds from the community pool, they're sitting idle outside of the community pool, right? So you could be funding like a small team or a small app. There was a guy, I think, he asked for $10,000 from the community pool for L2 uh, app, he got declined, okay? So this $10,000, they're gonna refill in like, say, like you're gonna find them again, in, like if the L1 team needs them in two months, they're gonna be here. So, but right now, if we take them from the community pool today, they stay, they sit in a wallet, they do nothing. That's horrible, you know, because we have money which is sitting here, not being put at use to actually fund uh, the revival or fund like uh, L2 developers, etc. Okay, thanks for that. Um, we'll take one more question and then we'll start rounding up. I think we've been going for hour and a bit. Um, Tom, do you want to go ahead, mate? Go ahead, Tom. Um, yeah, I have a lot to say. Uh, it's a lot of lot going on this summer. Um, I uh, started a community about uh, 40, 50 days ago. We got over a thousand members. Uh, they're a little bit behind all of you guys. You guys are a lot more uh, advanced than them. Uh, but I made an education group where I can. Um, I'm holding my phone here. I made. I have and, and and build together. So I have um, guys that can make NFTs, but they don't know how to post them. So I have guys that know how to post them. So we're trying to build, um, you know, projects t- together through the community in in advanced Luna Classic that way. Um, I just created a Knights project, and we're going to do like thirty percent of the profit goes right back to the treasury, twenty percent uh, stuff like that. Uh, okay, yeah, there's there's few NFT projects, um, launch pads as well. You can reach out to them. I think Luna V Shape is one, and there's a couple more as well. You can reach out to them. Did you have any question for the panel for, on USDC? Oh, sorry, no, no, on uh, USDC, no. Um, every, you guys are doing a great job. I was just punching in to uh, say hello to everybody and just let my name be known that I'm Tom and I'm here, and I'm. I hope everybody's doing great, and uh, I appreciate everything you guys do. I read all your uh, posts. I share them all with the rest of the community. Everybody's excited for all the work you guys do, and uh, keep up the hard work and keep keep the posts coming so I can let the community know what's going on. Cool. Thanks. Thanks, Tom. Um, okay, um, Fafi. We'll start rounding up now, mate. Do you want to do your final rounds? We'll go around the table. Yes, I guess. Uh, I mean, I think just, yeah, to, to keep that in mind, uh, you know, let's, let's not just overuse um, the word drama for nothing, right? So it's good to be able to, uh, to, uh, to look at what we do right and wrong with, uh, you know, with a certain uh, objectivity, let's put it this way. Let's be open, let's not fight, let's not take sides. Uh, I would like to reiterate, by the way, Bilbo is like a great person. He's amazing and extremely skilled. 
Right, so let's not please like you know have a go at him just because some people told you he's not a good person or whatever. I need to bring Bill Bob and, here uh, once. I have one more exciting thing yeah. to say about USTC. Um, Miata just created my friend uh, Freddie. He just created a uh, setup where you can buy NFTs now on Miata with Luna or USTC, which is a nice option. Cool. Yeah, Miata is another one. Luna V shape and the Miata, the two ones that I know about. But no worries. Thanks, Tom. All right, go ahead, Fafi. Yeah, that's it. So basically, just that. And the other thing is that uh, it's gonna be. A, I mean, USTC repeg is a tough question. It's difficult. We need to get started. It's something like which is a hot topic, and it has like many, uh, you know, uh, many development avenues. And I think we have a very good team of very capable people, and I think it's worth to to at least get started and, and start like you know learning about what this means exactly and how this goes and the whole like the development process of these things, how they go. That's pretty much it for me. And also that we wouldn't be doing this if we don't believe into it because that's not the right thing to do, obviously. So uh, I'm going to leave it for the others to have a last word if they wish to. But Okay, yeah. no, thanks. I'm, I'm, I'm really looking forward to this. The way I sort of see it, sort of my 60 IQ sort of moon by trading hype is this obviously this USTC works, you know, we get behind it. Lots of influencers tweet about it. Luna Classic still has a big community. You'll see myself and lots of other influencers come into the community because you get all the likes and followers. So if you can get the hype going, that will be great. Luna Classic could get a pump. The other way is, you know, we just keep dragging out. We keep doing what we're doing, paying as it 16, 20% staking rewards. We keep draining out the community pool. Hopefully the bull market comes and Luna Classic bags, our bags get pumped. That's one one way. The other way is, you know, sort of just in trying out different things, you know, taking risks on USDC Repeg. What if it, it fails? You know, if we don't, like Alex said, if we don't do anything, we're just going to run out of the hype. This I don't think the hype will always stay with us. Luna Classic is a weird community and it always seems to, you know, stick around and support. We go through scams and we always get supported. Um so yeah, take some risks, see, see what happens rather than just dying out. The bull market's not around for another two, three years. And what's going to happen to Luna Classic? The, the the viewers and stuff will go down. I mean, Alex will remember there was like three, four hundred, I think a thousand people once. Uh, one of the spaces we did before people turned up. And as we go along, the, the, the community will probably go down. So yeah, take take action, do whatever, even if it's not the perfect thing, yeah, I'll support you. I want to get behind something. I want to pump my bags. You know, when, when Luna Classic burn tax got involved, I, I, that was one of my most profitable trades. And I hope, you know, people ask me why I still do these spaces. I hope this, um, I think that you guys are working on works. Um, I'm not going to start shilling it just yet. I'll wait for, for you guys to say the exchanges are on board and then I'll start shilling it as well. I'll get my bags ready and, and hopefully we can do something similar like what happened with the Luna Classic Burn uh, narrative. I know the market cap was a lot smaller, so it's easier to jump onto new shiny things and that's what people do. And, and Luna Classic mar market cap is a lot higher, takes a lot more hype. Um, new money to pump but um, those are sort of my I know people ask me sort of my opinion I, I try not to give my opinion as much because I'm a moon boy linked to one dollar and all that stuff but yeah those are some things negatives and positives uh, from my end and um, Redline uh, what's your final thoughts mate? Um, no I agree with Afi and uh, thanks for having us up there but I'd maybe just like to reiterate that our team isn't in conflict or competition with the L1 team um, like we're two totally different skill sets to do totally different things um, and all of the work we are going to be doing is going to be off chain whereas all of the L1 team's work is going to be on chain so neither of our scopes of work interfere with each other Okay thanks Alex final words from you No I mean just uh, you know I think if if the if some kind of um, you know stable coin fix is what the community wants i would just i would just you know pound the drum one more time you know don't let the perfect be the enemy of the good and and um you know we we, we can always adapt um as new information comes our way um and uh we can always find new information that justifies a very slight change of approach or something but but if if this is something that the community wants, I I would just say, just um, you know, 
give it the green light and don't don't like wait around another year right uh for for some you know more perfect imaginary proposal or um you know group of people that maybe you're more familiar with or something like that can come too right um that can come along later if um if that's what the community wants but um trying solutions is better than doing nothing even if those solutions aren't perfect no well well said alex well thank you guys again i think your props passing um someone just messaged that um thor's voted yes so we'll see how your proposal goes if it does pass we'll um get in touch with you in a couple of weeks time maybe um get another update and yeah give us something as a as an influencer moon boy give us some hype to get behind um, so i can start tweeting um and more influencers and people start getting behind it as well so good luck to you guys um thank you people for joining asking questions and yeah maybe speak to you guys in in a couple of weeks time good night